So today we're doing something I know you guys have been waiting for. So I got the Mandalorian costume from Cosplay Sky to do a review on it. And they said it was okay if I take that costume and uh, turn it into sort of a more screen accurate one further along down the line. So this is what we're doing today. So for my Mando, I'm going for the very end of season one look, which is uh, the really heavily weathered uh, costume because I really like weathered stuff and it also gives me an excuse to use a couple of new techniques that I'm going to be implementing in uh, further future costumes. Uh, so first things first is we get the old um, cosplay sky suit and we take all of the leatherette armour that's stitched onto the suit and take it off. So I just use a little seam ripper just to carefully go around all the thread and take it off. So first step as always has got to be Templating the armor now if you don't want to make your armor from scratch there are files for 3d printed armor online You know as I usually do on this channel I like to work everything out by eye myself and try and put it together myself as well Okay, so I've cut out some bits for the top of the chest and I'm going to transfer them straight to this, which is a Foamex. got this from eBay. So this particular brand is Pal Foam. Uh, this is basically um, if plastic and uh, EVA foam had a baby, you'd get this kind of material. Uh, so it's pretty solid, but you can still cut it and heat form it kind of the same way as EVA foam. Obviously, it's just a bit tougher to go through it with a blade. This is the same stuff that we used for making Matt's Mandalorian costume, if you've seen that video. We did a custom one for him, and that was my first time using foam mix, so I think this should work well. So I just want to make sure that I can put it all together and it looks all right, and then I can build up from there.
so this is how the chess piece is looking at the moment. Uh, so I just made sure I heated it up with the heat gun just to get that sort of nice curve on it. And there are some gaps that need to be filled, so we're going to do that a little bit later. Um, but first up, we're just going to go over the edges with the Dremel, just round some of the bits out, even it out. Uh, I need to round off this little bit as well because that's got to go in the middle of the chest diamond. So this is kind of how it looks at the back. I've just filled in some of the, the gaps that I've sort of been left behind with some hot glue just for a bit of extra reinforcement. Yeah, when that's all sanded we'll come back in and uh, we'll start filling in all these little gaps.
All right, so here's what we've got now of our Fomex armor. So we've got our chest plate. Uh, that was a bit awkward to do, just trying to figure out the shapes, but I think it's come out quite nicely. Uh, we've got the two shoulder bells. Uh, these ones uh, obviously went over with the miller put just to fill in all the edges and make sure everything looks like it's all one piece and then any other gaps that are in the miller put I've just filled with filler. So they're ready to go. Got the uh, the little hand plates here. I just went and scored the edges with the blade and tried to open up the scores like you do with the EVA foam using a heat gun. It did work for some bits, on another bits it didn't work so I had to go through and um, cut out other bits with a little engraving tool. As you can see here this side I sort of had to try and go back in and line bits up because it um, warped a little bit. But this one has come out quite nicely, so I made sure all the gaps between the, uh, the separate panels were filled in. So obviously it looks like there's big gaps in there now, but that's just because there's no primer on there and we've got different colours of filler and we'll put and stuff. And we've got the leg pieces, so we've got this one which is the nice clean, uh, what will be Beskar one. Again, I've just kind of tried to fill in the edges and neaten it up. Um, some of these very, very small indents, um, like that belly there, we're going to fill those when we do the primer layer. Because I'm going to use um, some two-pack filler primer on here just to even out uh, the surface texture of the Foamex. Because like foam, you've kind of got this very slight sort of bumpiness to it. So I want to make sure it's really nice and smooth so when the metallic paint goes on it looks really, really good. And this is um, our other leg. Now everyone seems to do theirs differently on uh, the costumes. I've seen people do this leg and paint it entirely silver. But this is his original piece. You didn't get a full Beskar uh, right leg piece. So this half on the costume is still brown and it looks like the um, the blaster marks or dents that are in the leg have been filled in with like remaining bits of Beskar. So that's kind of what I've done with the middle put here. I've just done sort of like a, a sloppy thing to try and make it look like the, uh, the molten metal that's gone in there. So that bit's going to be painted up real nice and that bit's just going to be like a, just a brown colour on that side. So we've still got some armour bits to make but I'm not going to do them out of Fomex because uh, they're just they'll warp if I try and bend them too much uh, so they'll be better done out of foam which is going to be the right leg which is uh, a Shaw Trooper leg armour I have my Shaw Trooper here so I can show you So the Mandalorian actually has this uh, piece of armour on his costume as well doesn't have anything on the left leg it's kind of like leather wraps and straps on the other leg so we don't have to worry about armour for that one and we need to do the gauntlets as well I've made a couple of gauntlets before I've done one for the Templar Knight which I'm still putting on hold because I'm getting enough stuff to actually make the chainmail with and I've done one for my holiday special Boba Fett so I've kept the template for it so this is just a template I made as you can see it's pretty much just sort of a slightly curved rectangle so you've got a curve on the top end, a curve on the bottom and these sides are angled up a little bit so this is a template I always keep because it always comes in handy uh, so we're going to cut this bit out on 5mm foam and then add all the details with other varying thicknesses of foam
So the last part of the armour we've got to make is the Shoal Trooper right leg. It doesn't have any armour on the left leg in the best car version. Uh, so no one's got any templates at the moment they can share with me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a template of my own using... Um, this is my TK Commander leg. You can get templates online but I didn't want to um, buy a full kit template just to use one part of it. So uh, I did know a couple of uh, people who have done some EVA foam builds but no one's got it at the moment. So if you do struggle with this you can buy templates but be aware it's going to be for the whole short trooper costume not just the one bit you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some masking tape over one side of my TK leg and I'm going to use that to make uh, my own template and then we'll just work it from there. So here we have one piece that's been primed and has been wet sanded with 800 grit so it's really nice and smooth, you don't have the texture that was originally on the Fomex so you've got a really really nice base to go on to do the metal paint so this is the paint we're going to be working with today. So this is metal veneers paint, uh, kits like this you're looking at about £120 uh, for something like this because it's actually got proper metal bits in there. I know it seems very expensive for paint, but this is something that we are using for multiple projects, not just the Mando. So we are definitely going to get our money's worth out of this one. So this one is Tin Man, so this is for doing uh, the silver paint. So this is to make it look like proper metal. Uh, you can also get like copper and bronze paints from this particular company. So I'm just going to quickly cover it in this video and do a more in-depth video separately. So for anyone who's really interested, um, you can go check that video out and we can show you the, the very step-by-step -step bit. But just uh, for now, it's basically mixing all these together. So I think it's uh, 150 of this. 25 grams of this, 25 grams of this, and some thinner, just in case. Uh, basically, when you spray it on, it goes like this um, uh, really dark grey colour, and it's quite solid. It's almost like a resin when it dries. And then you have to uh, sand it away at various grits, and that's what brings out the metal colour. 
So just gonna mix a bit now and uh, yeah, spray that on. Hopefully it will come out looking lovely. So these are some of our finished uh, sprayed pieces. So as you can see, it doesn't come out like a perfect metal paint. Uh, you actually have to sand this now. So we've got a few imperfections on certain pieces. So I'm gonna wet sand uh, with an 800 grit and then I'm gonna go over it again with a 1200 and then we're gonna polish it up real, real nice. I know it's gonna be weathered so you're gonna uh, lose a lot of the, the uh, metal underneath because of the weathering but you still want that really nice solid base to work from because it's gonna look really good when you add that weathering on the top. Okay, so this is how our armor looks after going over it with 800 and also going over it with 1200 with a hand sander. So now it's time to polish it. So I got this which kind of looks like a giant electric toothbrush, but it's a little hand sander. I've got like a little sponge on the end. It's a slightly coarse one. And this is some uh, coarse polish as well used for polishing uh, scratches out of paint. So we're just gonna go ahead and polish this whole thing down and hopefully it should come out looking really nice and shiny. All right, so here's our Beskar armor so far. Some bits have definitely come out nicer than others. The best is definitely chest piece. I did spend the most time on that. And we've got our left leg piece that's come out really nice. There's a couple of areas where I've burned through to the, uh, the primer layer below, which is why you can see the spots of white. Unfortunately, there's one right in the middle of the shoulder blade. But as this kit is gonna be weathered, we can do uh, a little paint job over the top, so that's not gonna be too much of an issue. Obviously, if you want a piece like that that is clean, but you've got the big um, sort of burn marks, as it were, uh, you're gonna have to respray it and just be very, very careful going over the top. The gauntlets aren't amazing, because obviously it's hard to sand um, certain bits, and because this is foam, it does flex. So you get a little bit of cracking, but once this is weathered, this shouldn't look too bad. So with this uh, right leg, you'll notice only half of it has been sanded and uh, I haven't um, been very thorough in sort of like the gaps between the raised pieces because this is actually like the really messy section of armor that the Mandalorian still has even after getting his best guard upgrade. So basically this half is brown. I think there's a little bit at the top that's kind of like a blue and uh, this bit is sort of a, the nice metal but has got sort of a darker, almost like burn patches. So I think this is kind of like leftover Beskar that they kind of used to patch up some uh, some damage in this leg. So what we gotta do is we gotta paint over the little areas here just to sort of blend in the silver. Tape off this bit that we don't want to get painted. Spray this section brown. Tape off the other bit. Spray that blue. I might uh, use a bit of uh, liquid latex just to paint in some edges so you don't get a straight tape edge and then you have to try and sand that back. And then once that's done that'll be it for this episode as we're gonna do the weathering at a later date when we've got all the armor pieces together including the helmet. We're also gonna have to weather the uh, the bodysuit too. Everything's gonna be weathered on this.
There we go, and that's our right leg piece now with all the colours on it. And here is the uh, current set of armour. So all our base colours done, ready for the weathering. So next step is going to be actually attaching it to the soft parts and working on making the soft parts look better. So that's the end of part one. I hope you've enjoyed the build so far. This is going to be a really nice looking suit to do. Obviously we've still got lots of bits left to go. I know people are going to ask about the Mudhorn Signet. I will be adding that on later. I don't know if I want to do the jetpack or if I want to kind of change up Canon a little bit and uh, have the Mandalorian rifle on my back instead because I kind of like the Holiday Special rifle and that's what it looks like. And I already have a Holiday Special rifle so I wouldn't mind adding another one to sort of the collection as it were. But yeah, this is going to be a little fun one to put together. So again, thank you very much for watching. Thanks as always has got to go out to my supporters on Patreon, especially to Jay Jeff Kenny, if you want to support me on Patreon, links as always at the end of the video and down in the description below. But of course you don't have to, if you like what you see, just subscribe, watch the video, share them, like them, all that good stuff. And I also now have a TikTok, which some people are finding me on, so in times where I've got like a free hour or two, I'm just kind of messing about on there. So uh, that's under Ace Cosplay. You'll know it's me when you go on, on the profile. <laughs> all my other social medias are in the link down below as well. I'm normally on Instagram the most if you want to see what I'm up to. And yeah, that's about it. So I'll see you in the next video. Take care and as always, may the force be with you.